What are tasers and why are they used in the police? Um, tasers aren't my expertise ability. Expertise ability. Expert ability. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> They're not my bag, baby. Um, I, tasers got brought in for firearms cops as a less lethal weapon. Uh, oh, you know. Just keep it running. Keep it running. <laughs> Tasers got brought in for firearms cops for a less lethal option. And then, what are you laughing at me for? I said it wrong again. <laughs> <laughs> right, tasers. Let's start again. Tasers. Fuck that up, didn't I? Right, it's like a gun that shoots electric. The end. Um, it got brought in for firearms cops who didn't want to use, or it wasn't appropriate to use a real gun. Then they got dished out amongst either ops or... Uh, Bobby's and there were all sorts of laws came in about you've got you've got to be double crewed you've got to do this you've got to do that but it, it, obviously it's a gun that shoots out two barbs I think it's over a distance of probably like 15 feet and it emits I probably think between 25 and 50 thousand pound pound 50 thousand volts of electricity and it's got interchangeable cartridges and and they look really good to be honest with you um uh, they, they've been brought in as a less lethal option. I think that you use tasers before you do your fists or kicking or headbutting, and you definitely use it before CS gas and batons. Uh, but we go to skirmishes, and first thing we do is rack his baton out and start hitting people around legs with it, or on hands or arms. But then when people see someone else gets tasered, they throw rights from, oh, you shouldn't be tasering him. And I understand there's a bit in law at a moment where people have probably died from tasers, but how many people have died from head injuries or how many people have died from other sorts? So every time I've seen a taser work, it's been brilliant. It's been one of the best things you could ever give a bobby, so to speak. It's a, it's a life-saving piece of equipment. Uh, when were they introduced into the police, do you remember? I want to say... Um, I think what I say they started coming about 2008 to 2010, definitely for firearms and and then I think towards B, I think 2010 to 2012. But ever since I've known Bobby's with tasers, the public have got a little bit more. And when I say public, I don't mean decent members. I mean shitbaggy people. They've all got a little bit more um, distant and a little back off a lot more because when I've seen Bobby's roll up to jobs and have not got a taser and they can get swamped. But I've seen Bobby's roll up with tasers. I've seen massively, massively violent people. And as soon as you call it red dot, as soon as you pull taser out and the red dot them, red dot's like a bit of a laser, that's an arm warning. It's like you've been red dotted. When, you know, you've seen on films when they've got the submachine gun, it comes over, me. Uh, <laughs> now Malik it be here, wouldn't it? It's like shooting back of his ear off. Um, but when they get red dotted, people like panic and say, yeah, all right. I don't know if it goes a bzzzm, like a lightsaber or something like that. I mean, it's a great noise. But when people get red dotted, most people, no matter how violent they are, they have just backed down. Um, so it's been a, a, a massive lifeline and a, a comfort blanket for so many bobbies. And I wasn't taser trained, I didn't want to do it. But like Baby Ben were taser trained and a, a lot of other people. And they've all said that they felt a little bit more confident. And then when they've pulled it out, people have backed off or done what they needed to do. And, got on the floor. It's helped me out in many situations as well when people have been taser trained. Do you have any idea what it feels like actually being tasered? Um, I've watched a lot of videos and I've been there when someone's been tasered uh, and all I can say is I don't want to get tasered. I've been sprayed with CS gas and that hurts. That is so much pain, it's untrue. That's like licking a, licking world's hottest chilli, having nettles stung in your face and then having boiling water tipped on your head all at the same time. That's what being sprayed with CS gas is like. And it hurts more than that. So <laughs> I don't want to have it done, but I've seen it done, and it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Can you tell us about the first time you actually saw someone tasered? Yeah, I were, I were on patrol in Shipley, single crewed, and one of my mates, Mickey Mike, uh, that's not his real name, it's Mickey Zars, but hi Mick. Mickey Mike's at a, a ground floor flat in Windle, and he shouts up for someone to come and give him a bit of an hand. So I love Mick, he's like my brother. So straight up there, give it some beans, get up there. And we're having a bit of a conflob as what's going on. And all I remember is I remember this door barging open and this lad bald head running out with this fucking knife in his hand. And I'm I'm three sheets to win at this point. I'm talking to Mick, I'm having a bit of a word. And also I hear this, something like, fucking pigs. And it's just, you know, when you turn, and you turn around in slow motion, it's that sort of noise in it in slow motion. And this lad comes running out and rushing, oh, fucking bastards. 
Now I'll just I'll just do this like that, and he's he's about six foot away from me, and he's literally he's just gone poof, and mix shot taser at him, taser taser taser, and it's hit him in the chest, and this lad's literally as soon as he's run out of door, he's been shot, and he's dropped straight to the floor, he's gone literally firm as a rock, straight up as a pole, and he's like uh, uh, and he's dropped down to the floor, and he's like uh, 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 checking, and the only thing I could do was go yes. Yes, in your face. And I just pointed at this lad, and he was like, this lad was checking, and I pointed at him, and I did feel bad for him, but I didn't, because I technically wanted to shout to Mick, do it again, do it again, <laughs> let me see it again. But obviously, Mick was shouting, Tears, 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 put your hands behind your back. You can hear, you can hear, you can listen, you can hear everything that's going on. It's not like it's frying your brain, it's literally, it's, it's subduing your muscles. So that lad drops knife and puts, oh, no, I didn't think he could, I think Mick had to take his finger off the trigger for him to drop the knife and then put it back on for a split second afterwards. And he said, put your arms behind your back, and he did. We cuffed him and locked him up. But then what astounded me, Mick clicked off the end of the taser, which is like this little black box, which has got the barbs in it and the wire. And that goes with a man then to either a hospital, nurse or a doctor, because it's fucking dark. It's like a James Bond dart. It goes right into his skin. And it's got like a special look on it, so you can't just pull it out, it, it goes in, it hooks around your flesh. I have seen people that have pulled them out and like, it, it tears big holes in the skin and stuff, but he had to go to doctor's or hospital and have these taser barbs removed. And can you imagine one of them eating your eyeball? You know, or side of nostril or cheek or lip. It it really, really hurt, but this lad went down and I were, I think I were more in a comedy area than I were a serious incident where someone's gonna get stabbed because I just laughed and pointed. But Mick says to me, it's obviously, and I do understand this at the time, it's such an important thing because the people have died from being tasered and the gas that we had at the time, the CS gas, were flammable with the taser. So if you're spraying someone at the same time as someone's tasering, that's why you shout taser, 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 it, it'd have gone up in a ball of flames. But when you're not seeing it, and it was just the first time, the instant reaction I saw it, it's like a comedy, comedy set, it's like some of a film. It's not real to see someone go so rigid so quickly and dropped it flowing but like a plank of wood. It's bizarre. It's brilliant to watch and they're a brilliant, brilliant tool. Was there ever a time when you'd get someone who was able to resist being tasered and it wouldn't actually be effective on them? I think we've had one that were like that. Um, I can't remember exactly where it was. It were in, I think it were outside a night. I think it were outside Livingston's in Bradford. And I think he'd been tasered and it hadn't worked and we were grappling with him. They'd put up code zero out and they were asking us for, for us to come. But all I remember is, I don't know how this works, all tasers, the bobbies that are watching this will know. I think what you can do is do something like, I think they call it a dry stun. So rather than barbs come out, you can click it and you can use it as a gun. So you put it on the body then, rather than use it so far away. And you'll be tasered as everyone fighting him and it still wasn't working whether it was the taser the, the, something wrong with it or whatever but it just nothing was working on this lad so I've seen it a few times where um, it, it's not so much worked either there's been a back not a backfire but it's just not done what it's supposed to do or it, I think it's gone too far but I've seen it once where blokes blokes reacted not reacted sorry to it um, and it's fought it off and it's had to be a manpower to overpower him what was it that stopped yourself from being taser trained? How come you didn't want to do it? <laughs> if you want me to lie, I'll lie. But if you want me to tell the truth, I'll tell the truth. So basically, every we had a policy that um, every taser officer goes to a domestic. And when you're thinking of domestics, you might think of, a, no, we need to go, because this is, this is Barry knocking it out at Ilda, and we don't stand for that. No, it's not like that. This is where Ilda knocking it out at Barry and she'd come at you straight away when you went in with a frying pan and start braining you over head. And it was, you were getting tied up then with violent domestics and then a pursuit would come in or a fatal would come in, you, you weren't able to attend it because you were in cells then with this. So when they said, oh, you've got to turn out to all these domestics, a lot of people in traffic went, yeah, we're not having them. We're not, we're not, getting, involved, not, not getting involved in that, but we're paid at that time to do a bit of a different job. We're the ones that pursue the cars and go to the fatals. And if we tied up with a domestic, which nine times out of ten we were locking up from at domestics, it was just harder and harder and harder to get away and do your proper job. So that's why a lot of traffic cops didn't do it. But basically, I'm just going to say, I couldn't fit any more tackle on my vest. That's going to be the best excuse, isn't it? I was too overpowered by what was going on my vest anyway. I didn't want another taser. 
but yeah, I just didn't want to go to domestics. <laughs> this is my new book, Cortal Tango 2-3. It's available from Amazon now, and click the link below if you want one. Thank you.